American R&B singer Keith Douglas Washington was born one of six children on November 15, 1960 in Detroit, Michigan. His biological father left the family at one point and his mother remarried a man that Keith says was always there for him and his siblings. The Motor City was one of the best places he could have been raised with the environment being so rich with many of the world's best singers, songwriters, recording artists, and performers. Some of Keith's own family members also had exceptional musical talent. One of his sisters discovered Keith's talent for singing one day when she happened to overhear him singing a James Brown song that she always loved to play. She made the then six-year-old sing for everyone else in the house and they all agreed that he was good. So his sister took him to their aunt, who was already in the business, and she started taking him around to various venues, including nightclubs, where he could perform and earn a paycheck to help support his large family. Around the age of 17, Keith joined a doo-wop group. They went over to Philadelphia International Records to try to score a deal with famed songwriting and production duo Kenneth Gamble and Leon Huff. They liked the group, but really had their eye on Keith. The record label founders could tell right away that Teddy Pendergrass was one of Keith's biggest influences, since his singing technique favored him so much. However, the world already had a Teddy Pendergrass. In fact, he was even signed to that very label. So the group wasn't able to make it happen. Keith moved on and in 1984, he made his first TV debut on the hit show, Star Surge. The exposure afforded him opportunities to do background recording sessions with renowned artists such as Stevie Wonder, George Clinton, Mickey Howard, and The Jacksons, just to name a few. His first hit wouldn't be one that his voice was featured on, though. People would initially get to experience Keith Washington from his writing ability when he penned Freddie Jackson's 1988 number one song, Hey Lover. Keith would finally score his own successful track with Kissing You. The woman who would later become his wife, Marsha Jenkins, actually helped write the second half of the song after Keith wrote the first verse and got stuck trying to figure out where to go from there. The demo that the song was placed on helped him secure a deal with Elektra Records. After a move to LA, Keith then began work on his debut album. While working on it, he says that he didn't have any intention of including Kissing You because the song wasn't even meant for him. He wrote it with the intention of passing it on to Anita Baker. He ended up accidentally playing it though in front of his label's a &R executive, who loved it from the moment he heard the first note. Keith explained that it was meant for someone else, but that executive told him that it belonged to Keith. The song became a top 20 hit on the Billboard Hot 100 and went all the way to number one on the R&B chart. It was also nominated for a Grammy Award for Best R&B Vocal Performance Male and won a Soul Train Music Award for Best R&B Soul Single Male. Loving you all through the night his debut album titled Make Time for Love was released in the spring of 1991. By the time that Keith had completed the project though, the a &R that believed so much in him left Elektra to go work for Quincy Jones. As it's happened many times with many artists, the new person that took his place wasn't feeling Keith as much, so Elektra dropped him. The a &R that went over to Quincy hyped Keith up to him and Quincy loved what he heard. So, Keith was then able to score a deal with his Quest Records. In addition to Kissing You, the project also featured Are You Still In Love With Me, which went to number 15 on the R&B chart. A duet with Kylie Minogue called If You Were With Me Now, off her 1991 album Let's Go Get It, was also released. It became an international hit for Keith, reaching number four on the UK singles chart. Another song that his fans would develop a deep love for, even though it didn't appear on any of his albums, was another duet with fellow R&B songstress Shantae Moore called Candlelight and You. It first appeared on the soundtrack to the 1991 comedy film House Party 2, and then on Shantae's 1992 album Precious. Keith's second album, You Make It Easy, dropped two years later and produced the singles Stay In My Corner, Believe That, and Trippin'. It would be another five years before Keith released his third project, KW, which featured the minor single, Bring It On. During his hiatus, he says he spent a lot of time processing his divorce. After his 14-year marriage to Marsha ended, she wrote a book titled The Other Side of Through, loosely based on her relationship with Keith and her experiences with his marital infidelities. She says she knew things had taken a major turn when women started throwing their undergarments at him on stage. However, she didn't feel like there was anything to worry about because she believed that love was all that mattered and at the end of the day, he came home to her. It didn't bother me at first. I didn't think I had anything to worry about. I knew he loved me. 
I was naive to think love was all you needed. I wasn't ready to get off my throne. I was the wife, and everybody else was whatever. Keith was, after all, marketed as a ladies' man and always portrayed an air of sophistication and style that women were very drawn to. In his unsung episode, he says that the world that his success had opened to him was brand new and full of opportunities. It's easy to assume that those opportunities were referring to his interactions with the opposite sex. For what it's worth, he did express feeling badly over betraying a woman who he says was good to him. My regret is that because I knew I had a good wife. I knew I had a great wife, actually. Someone really stood by me through my hardship of coming up. I became more of, of acting as though I'm a single man than a married man. You know, you can't do wrong and expect right to come out of it. Another interest of Keith's is acting. Over the years, he's been able to branch out in several opportunities, including a brief role in the TV soap opera General Hospital, as well as alongside Janet Jackson in the 1993 romantic dramedy film Poetic Justice. Another memorable appearance for Keith was starring as himself on the series Martin, in an episode which featured him singing the 1978 Roberta Flack and Donny Hathaway hit ballad, The Closer I Get to You, with Tisha Campbell Martin. Many years later though, Keith would subtly reveal in an interview that he was surprised he even got a call to do the role, since there had already been a lot that went on between him and Martin prior. But it was so much that went on before I did the show. Mm. I mean, when I tell you, and if I told y'all this story, man, I, I mean, it was it was absolutely, it was interesting. You know, it was very interesting. Know that story. You I'm surprised. Story. I'm, I'm you totally surprised. I'm surprised that I even did the. I was surprised when I got the call. I put it that way. Okay. I mean, because mm. it was it was. Martin well, and I, Martin and I are, are real cool. Now that's my dude. We got much love and respect for each other. And I thank him and the rest of the team for allowing me the opportunity to show my acting skills and to be a part, be a part of the Martin Ross show. I'll leave it at that. In 2013, Keith took on his most difficult role to date, playing soul legend Marvin Gaye in the stage play, My Brother Marvin. While initially people were skeptical about his ability to play the iconic singer, Marvin's own family members gave him their blessings and believed that he would do a great job. No doubt a big part of why he gave such an outstanding performance was that he was able to pull so many emotions from his personal life as he was dealing with the murder of his mother around this time. While researching for this video, I wasn't able to find any details about the incident, and it appears Keith has never spoken publicly about it. In the summer of 2009, Keith married his longtime girlfriend, Stephanie Grimes. They would divorce in 2015. During his second marriage though, Keith made a move back to Detroit and got into the radio business as an on-air personality, hosting the nighttime slow jam show, Kisses After Dark, on KISS 105.9. In 2010, Keith had a moment while at the station with longtime friend Aretha Franklin that he didn't intend to broadcast and ended up turning into a very embarrassing moment for him. He called her up, off the air, to inquire about her doing an interview with him. She let him know that she would get back to him when she was feeling up to it. At that time, Aretha was dealing with a major health issue. She told Keith and they talked a little bit about how she was handling it. Allegedly, someone at the radio station decided to turn up the fader and captured everything from the phone that was placed on speaker mode. Keith and Aretha's private conversation then suddenly went public when it was then uploaded to social media. The backlash in Keith's direction was quick and fierce. He released an official statement on the controversy read in part, on November 8th, while on a break from the on-air broadcast, I called Aretha Franklin because it had just come to my attention she had to cancel her tour plans for the next six months due to health issues. Our conversation was captured on the live video stream as are others, but I was not aware her end of the conversation was audible to the microphone. I would never consciously do anything to hurt her or invade Aretha Franklin's privacy. Both Radio 1 and I regret any distress this has caused to Aretha Franklin, her family, or the public. Over the last decade or so, Keith's kept a fairly low profile, but during the 2020 pandemic, he built a studio in his home in Las Vegas and has since gotten back into making music on a regular basis. He also continues to tour.